All right. Welcome, everybody. My name is Dana Sparks. I am the broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors and the director of the Real Estate Academy of America. All right. Let me cover more forms uh, that GAR has revised in July, especially regarding compensation. So here we go. Ready to dive in. And new forms. So there is, this is not a new form. This is a form that has been revised. This form used to say uh, commission agreement, co-op commission agreement to be used prior to showing. In July, it now says pre-showing compensation agreement. So with the NAR settlement, um, part of that agreement is that the co-op fee is no longer going to be referenced in an MLS service that is an NAR member MLS service. Specifically, Georgia MLS is an NAR member MLS service. Navica is an NAR MLS service. FMLS is independent. Just so y'all know, FMLS is independent and it is not a member of NAR. Therefore, they do not have to comply with any of the NAR settlement issues because they have nothing to do with NAR. So as of right now, um, FMLS is still showing, and, and the, uh, according to the preliminary settlement, this goes into effect August 17th, whatever that day is. I think it's the 17th. <clears throat> August, am I in the wrong year? Anyway, um, okay, I'm sorry. August 17th, 14th, I don't know. Anyway, okay, FMLS not only is still showing co-op compensation, FMLS also has a brand new remarks section. They've got private public remarks, private remarks, and compensation comments. So FMLS is still showing this. FMLS is independent and does not have to follow any of the NAR settlement issues because they are not a member of NAR. Georgia MLS, however, and the majority of other MLSs, I don't know of any other independent MLS, at least in our area, Metro Atlanta, uh, that is independent. They are taking all of that out. So there is nothing in the NAR settlement against co-op commissions or co-op compensation. Sellers can still allow their brokers to share the compensation with a buyer's broker. However, as a buyer's broker, you're going to have to communicate with the seller's broker to find out what, if any, compensation is coming from their side, you're not going to readily see it communicated through at least Georgia MLS. You might through FMLS. There's nothing against a co-op compensation. Um, and it can be communicated anywhere else other than an NAR member MLS service and showing time because showing time is related to MLS. This new form, it's not new, it's a revised form. It used to be co-op commission agreement to be used prior to showing. The date is important. So you identify the property and it states uh, that the, buy, the seller and or the seller's broker, depending on who is paying the compensation to the buyer's broker, hereby confirms to buyer's broker the compensation for professional brokerage services to which the buyer's broker shall be entitled in the event the buyer with whom the buyer's broker is working with or representing and who will be identified in any offer made by such buyer through the buyer's broker contracts to purchase and closes on the property. Such compensation shall be paid to buyer's broker by the party identified below at the closing of such transaction. The agreement is contingent upon the offer to purchase that's made through the buyer's broker working with or representing. Working with 
means the buyer's broker is working with them as a customer. Representing means the buyer's broker is working with the buyer as a client. So it doesn't matter what the relationship is. That public buyer is still working with the broker. The buyer being delivered to the seller's broker. So the offer has to be delivered to the seller's broker within so many days of that date. The offer of compensation shall expire if no offer to purchase the property is made within the time frame and this pre-showing compensation agreement is not otherwise extended by agreement of the buyer's broker and the party paying the compensation. So it is described compensation. Again, this is from the seller side. Compensation being offered to the buyer's broker. This is how much. And this is who is paying it. The amount expressed as a percent of the, of the sale price, a flat fee or other. And it is being paid by the seller directly in addition to what the seller is paying their own broker. It is being paid by the seller's broker. They're sharing it out of the compensation, the total compensation the seller is paying them or a combination between the seller directly and the seller's broker. And then it goes on to say there's no claim for compensation if there's no closing and buyer's broker and all other parties and broker signing have, have the right to rely on this. It goes on to say that this pre-showing agreement shall not modify or amend any separate agreement regarding the buyer's broker compensation. So again, the buyer in the buyer's brokerage agreement or the buyer customer acknowledgement, the buyer agrees to pay their broker a certain amount of compensation at closing. This agreement does not change that, but this agreement could potentially offset, this is money coming from the seller side, could offset the buyer's obligation depending on how you filled out those paragraphs we just talked about. Here's this paragraph G that says, if the compensation being offered to the buyer's broker is more than the buyer's broker is permitted to accept and the buyer does not consent to the additional compensation, then the offer of compensation herein shall be reduced to the amount of compensation the buyer's broker is committed, permitted to accept. Remember, that's where we, I told, I told you guys, uh, do not leave this section blank where it has, ma let me go back up here, maximum amount, don't leave that blank because this is what this is uh, referring to. If that is left blank or is, is not filled in, then any of this is uh, left on the table, not permitted to accept. Any licensee signing this agreement on behalf of their broker warrants they have full authority to sign and bind the broker to the compensation agreement. And then it is signed. If the seller, so this is just signed. So this is gen, uh, what we are used to thinking of as a co-op agreement. So it's signed just by the brokers. However, if part of the compensation is coming directly from the seller, then the seller also has to sign this. It says if the seller is paying buyer's broker compensation referenced herein, the seller has to sign it. Seller does not need to sign this agreement if all compensation to be paid herein is being paid by the seller's broker. Woo! All right, everybody. We made it. <laughs> Those if you like that video, check out the one here. If you like the content on this entire channel, please click here to subscribe. I try to take even the most complicated of real estate situations and make them crystal clear. See what I did there? Real estate made crystal clear. Thank you guys so much for watching.